time travel is a subject often explored in sci-fi, and for good reason. It offers an endless amount of possibilities for the story to develop, and an equal amount of opportunities to torment its characters. Given its esoteric nature, the interpretations can be quite various, ranging from paradox-causing predicaments to ones more grounded in reality. Well, as much as they can be. I was surprised to find Steinsgate while operating in a medium that pushes the boundaries of the absurd to be part of the latter. It was exhilarating to watch something that didn't just regurgitate scientific-sounding nonsense, but instead of its plot be rested upon a foundation of something resembling scientific theory. Kurosu gives a speech at the start of the visual novel, explaining several theories of time travel, and each one is an existing proposal for the phenomenon. She mentions that out of all the theories, 11 of them are widely accepted in academia, one of which is the same one that Sciencegate seems to adhere to, the black hole theory. The show is surprisingly scientifically accurate, almost enough to fall under the umbrella of hard sci-fi a genre of science fiction that places an emphasis on real-life plausibility. From the many worlds interpretation, to cur black holes, to the concept of strange attractors, the show utilizes a lot of what we understand about physics and quantum mechanics today. First things first, however, we should define some terms. Time travel typically falls into one of two categories of temporal mutability, mutable or immutable. This simply refers to whether or not you can actually affect the timeline through time travel. If time is immutable, then the past, present, and the future are one entity. If you change the past, you would have already experienced the effects in the present. There's a story I read back in middle school that uses this concept. Two teenagers have to travel back to the past to stop Hitler, because the only reason the Allies win World War II is because they went back to the past to stop Hitler. Confusing, right? The problem with temporal immutability is that it brings forth a lot of paradoxes. If the kids already stopped Hitler, then they would have no reason to go back to the past in the first place. Primarily, the issue is with causality. And a lot of stories that involve time travel either have to work around this, or they ignore it entirely. Harry Potter is one that comes to mind. Fortunately, Steinsgate mostly sidesteps this problem by having its timeline be mutable. As you can see, with every d-mail that Okabe sends, the new present he finds himself in is drastically different. Steinsgate accomplishes this by using the Many Worlds interpretation. In the Many Worlds interpretation, there are an infinite amount of parallel universes where the events in our past that did not happen, did happen. And the way Steinsgate applies this interpretation is really quite ingenious. When someone receives a d-mail, the timeline that Okabe resides in and the one where the d-mail is received are now fundamentally incompatible. The past is information that it should not have. In an effort to resolve the resulting paradox, the timeline shifts into the so-called correct one, where the change past event did happen. Steinsgate refers to these infinite universes as world lines, borrowing the infamous John Titer's terminology. Just to be clear, and the show does clarify this, only one world line exists at any given moment. The others are simply mathematical probabilities, an endless sea of what-ifs waiting to be summoned into existence through an inadvertent d-mail. On that subject, how is it possible for a text message to be sent back in time in the first place? The anime takes some liberties with this, but essentially Okabe and his future gadget lab unintentionally create a cur black hole generator. The specifics are a little complicated, but essentially his phone microwave, named subject to change, generates black holes that are stabilized by electrons emitted by Mr. Braun's eponymous Braun tubes. John Titer, the actual John Titer from the event in our world, asserted that this was the method through which his own time travel machine worked. In the beginning, Okabe and company are only able to send text messages, the average size being about 140 kilobytes or so. Eventually, however, Kurusu works the magic and Okabe is able to send himself back, or the contents of his brain rather, with the time leap machine. The human brain is thought to be able to store 2.5 petabytes of data, an astronomical increase compared to a lowly text message. It would be inaccurate, however, to refer to the timeline of Steins Gate as being completely mutable. The show also introduces the idea of attractor fields, collections of world lines that have events that cannot be changed or prevented. Suzuha brings up the example of string. String is composed of many strands, but they all end up heading towards the same direction. What's incredible is that attractor fields actually exist as a concept in science. It's used in the context of dynamical systems, and how some systems tend to move towards the same set of numerical values even with disturbances and wide starting conditions. For a very simplified example, you can think of a pendulum. No matter how high you begin the swing, it always converge to a single point. Here lies the central conceit of Steinsgate and the whole reason for Okabe's suffering. In the anime, we follow three main attractor fields, the beta field, the alpha field, and of course the Steinsgate itself. We start off in the beta field, where Kurosu is gruesomely murdered after the conference. By inadvertently sending a d-mail to Daru, Okabe exceeds the divergence margin of the beta attractor field, and he's thrust into the alpha field, where he is to witness Mayuri's death time and time again. Finally, Okabe figures out how to avoid both Mayuri and Kurosu's death, resulting in the titular Steins Gate, as well as the ending that actually allows us to finally breathe again. The question is, just how does Okabe accomplish this feat? 
Remember how earlier I said Signsgate only mostly sidesteps issues of causality? So sending a demail that is enough to change the past creates a new world line. However, when Okabe is trying to save Kurosu, he doesn't use demails. He physically goes back in time with the use of the time machine. His first attempt to save her fails horribly, and this is what sets up the upcoming Steinsgate Zero. Where the issue comes up is a strange message he receives in the first episode. This message is sent from Okabe himself from the future within the same world line. But the reason it's all staticky at first is because the Okabe that sends it doesn't exist yet. You see the problem? This is where Steinsgate Zero comes in. The first time Okabe tries to save Kurosu and fails, he doesn't have future Okabe to help him. We'll call this guy Okabe Beta. He breaks down and gives up entirely, and after everything he's been through, I don't blame him. Okabe Beta is the one that makes it to the future and sends the keys to the kingdom to true Okabe, the secret to getting to the Steinsgate timeline. Steinsgate Zero will focus on Okabe Beta's journey to that point, and all the trials and tribulations he'll face along the way. With the existence of Steinsgate Zero, technically this means there's a new watch order. Now I wouldn't recommend it to new viewers unless they're a complete masochist, but it could be an interesting experiment for rewatchers. You'd start with episodes 1-22 to of Steinsgate, transition into the alternate episode of 23, complete Steinsgate Zero, watch the original episode 23, and then finally get sweet sweet closure out of episodes 24 and 25 of the original series. Your heart would probably be in pieces by the end, but it'd be interesting to say the least. It was really cool to watch Steinsgate and actually recognize some of the concepts they use in the show. While there certainly are elements that don't quite fit within the realm of science, like Okabe's reading Steiner ability, Steinsgate stands upon a solid foundation of scientific theory. It uses the many worlds interpretation to its fullest potential, resulting in the soul-crushing depression of watching Okabe break into tiny pieces. Its proposed method of time travel is actually somewhat plausible, at least in theory. And the way it ends both wraps things neatly in a bow, while also being open-ended enough to give us the gift of more Steinsgate through Steinsgate Zero. For rewatchers, I encourage you to suffer through the new watch order with me, we all know the ending is well worth it. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And of course, I'm not a mad scientist, so if anything I said was wrong, I'm sorry. I must have stuttered.